When it comes to transport aircraft during World War II, the first ones that come to mind are the famous models like the C-47 and Ju-52. Under the technological conditions at the time, the size and transport capacity of transport aircraft were incomparable to today. However, this did not hinder people from pursuing higher performance. The R-232 transport aircraft, developed by Germany in 1939, is an example of this. So, how does its performance level compare? First, let's introduce the R-232 transport aircraft. At the beginning of its design, it had extremely high requirements, specifically for short takeoff and landing performance, as well as the ability to take off and land on rough terrain. In modern terms, this is referred to as field airport takeoff and landing capability. Perhaps the strict requirements of the German military were related to their tactics. One of the essences of Blitzkrieg is to quickly attack and strike targets within the range, such as enemy airports, ammunition depots, command centers and garrisons, like a surgical knife. This tactic would paralyze airports and make it difficult to quickly repair the destroyed runways. Therefore, our transport aircraft had to take off and land on those field airports or temporarily repaired runways. Under a series of high standards, the R-232 was developed. It adopted a box-shaped cargo compartment, high monoplane wing, high horizontal tail, and twin vertical tails, among other designs, many of which were forward-looking. Its front cockpit had a large glass structure to maintain good visibility. Behind the cockpit was the cargo compartment. Unlike most transport aircraft at the time that used side doors, the R-232 used a rear-loading and unloading ramp structure. This design facilitated the entry and exit of large cargo. The dimensions of the entire cargo compartment were 6.6 .6 meters in length, 2.3 meters in width, and 2 meters in height. Therefore, the German barrel car could directly enter the cargo compartment from the rear. The aircraft originally had twin engines and was expected to use the BMW 801 engine. However, starting from 1940, this engine needed to be prioritized for the FW-190 fighter aircraft. Therefore, it was changed to the Brahmo 323 engine and the number of engines was increased to four. The corresponding total power increased from 3,200 horsepower to 4,800 horsepower. Having more engines also increased safety measures, so even if one engine failed, it would not lead to a fatal crisis. However, the drawback was the increased weight and other issues. It was precisely because of the difference in engines that the AR-232 was actually divided into two models, the twin-engine AR-323A and the four-engine AR-232B. The aircraft's unique landing gear is the reason for its nickname, Centipede. Its main landing gear is a conventional tricycle gear, and the front single-wheel landing gear under the nose can be partially retracted into the fuselage. This landing gear can also adjust its height, allowing for the adjustment of the slope of the rear ramp. The main landing gear can be retracted into the wings. In addition, there is a row of wheels under the belly of the aircraft, a total of 11 pairs or 22 wheels. Their existence is similar to tank suspensions, allowing the aircraft to maintain contact with the ground even on uneven terrain. Combined with Arado's flap technology, the aircraft has excellent short takeoff and landing capabilities. Some articles claim that the aircraft can take off in a runway distance of only about 200 meters with a takeoff weight of 16 tons. If assisted by rocket boosters, this distance can be further reduced. However, it is unclear whether this data is for the twin-engine or four-engine model. The aircraft also has strong self-defense firepower. It is equipped with an MG-131 machine gun in the nose and a rotating turret on the dorsal side with an MG-151 cannon. In addition, there is a rear-firing MG-131 machine gun. The four-engine AR-232 transport aircraft has an empty weight of 12,180 kilograms, a maximum takeoff weight of 21,150 kilograms, a maximum speed of 308 kilometers per hour, a cruising speed of 290 kilometers per hour, a maximum range of 1,062 kilometers, and a total production of about 20 aircraft. First, Let's talk about the attitude of the German military towards the R-232 transport aircraft. 
They believed that it was superior to the Ju-52 Ant Ju in terms of both transport capacity and aircraft performance. However, as the war worsened, Germany did not mass-produce this transport aircraft on a large scale. Germany needed to prioritize the supply of aviation aluminum and other resources to combat aircraft. Next, let's briefly compare it to other aircraft of the same period. As a large transport aircraft of the German military during World War II, it was not the most outstanding. Although it had many groundbreaking technological aspects, it was still a step below the C-54 Skymaster transport aircraft. The C-54 made its first flight in 1942 and had an empty weight of over 17,000 kilograms. Its maximum takeoff weight reached 33, 112 kilograms. Maximum speed was 441 kilometers per hour. Maximum range was 6,276 kilometers. In terms of cargo capacity alone, it far surpassed the AR-232 and had risen to the level of strategic transport aircraft, while the R-232 remained at the tactical level. However, compared to the smaller Airbus C-47 transport aircraft, the AR-232 still had absolute technological advantages. Except for slightly weaker range, it was superior in almost all other aspects. However, the biggest advantage of the C-47 was not its performance, but its industrial capacity. With a production volume of over 10,000, the AR-232 couldn't compete. Overall, the AR-232 is an excellent transport aircraft and one of the earliest professionally designed military transport aircraft. Like many German equipment at the time, it was highly precise and high performance. However, it was born during World War II, which severely affected its development path. If it had been born in peacetime, it might have been mass-produced on a large scale and become a classic of its generation.